Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to TCG Manager channel that is all TCG all the time and today is episode 8 of Buy, Sell or Hold and today we are taking a good look at Star Wars Unlimited. What is going on guys? Welcome back and yes, we are doing another Buy, Sell or Hold and this video taking a look at Star Wars Unlimited. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Buy, Sell or Hold, go check out some of my previous videos or my previous episodes. Uh, we've done now quite a bit. We've done Disney Lorcana. We've done Pokemon, One Piece. Uh, most recently, we did uh, Grand Archive. Uh, so these videos have been a lot of fun. You guys seem to really enjoy them, and I love getting your guys' feedback. So please, right now, if you're watching this video, please do me the big favor. Hit that like button. If you're new, consider hitting that subscribe button. And while you're at it, too, please comment down below what you guys think. You know, whether or not you agree with me, you disagree with me, whether you think this market's a good market, whether you think TCG is a good outlier, all these kind of stuff. If you guys have anything you guys that are on your mind, please, I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. I love engaging with you guys. Last video with Grand Archive, a lot of you guys came through and really were engaging with me, and I really do appreciate all of that. Um, I would really like to see some more of you guys in that comment section because when I make these videos, I mean, other than the like button, I really have no other way of engaging or figuring out whether or not you guys really like this type of stuff other than views and likes, you know, the little typical stuff. So please, if you guys really can hit that like button and comment, if you guys will, please. Thank you. So yes, we are going to take a good look at Star Wars Unlimited. It's a very, fairly new card game, but I think it's a good time to take a look at this because there are some weird things going on within TCG world in general. Like I think we do live in a golden era where there are so many card games out there right now. However, with more card games, it's not bringing down prices. We're actually seeing prices go up. So while, yes, I do think we live in a weird era, like almost like a golden era, because there's so many card games, you can choose from any one you want, but we're not living in like a very strong like buyer's market right now. It doesn't really scream buyer's market. And you think with more card games coming out, there would be a strong buyer's market, and that just is not the case right now. So let's go head over to TCG Player and take a look at exactly what I'm talking about. All right, you guys, we are now here at TCG Player. This is a site that I particularly like to use for buy, sell, or hold. Um, I understand there are some others out there, and yes, you can look at aftermarkets like eBay, and you can scour some third party as well. I think TCG Player does the best job giving you guys a good indicator whether or not now's a good market or whether we're seeing a decline. You can just look at certain trends. I know some people may disagree, and that's perfectly fine. And again, if you do disagree, comment down why. Um, but what I was just talking about earlier is like, we have more card games than I've ever seen in my life ever. I mean, just look at all these card games just here on the top page right here. And then if you click more, these are all card games, guys, everything on here is pretty much a card game or some sort of card game. Like I see hero clicks, that's more of a miniature game, but does use, uh, isolate some cards. Um, but pretty much everything else now, we even even got alpha clash on here. If you don't know what alpha clash, it was another Kickstarter game that launched not that long ago. So we really are living in a golden era of card games. And I mean, by golden era, I mean, there are so many to choose from. However, it's not a good buyer's market right now. You think with more card games out there, with more people to choose from, that that means that people will be more selective with what they buy. The market's not really screaming that. This market's screaming that everybody's just spending a lot of money on these card games. Case in point, Star Wars Unlimited. So Star Wars Unlimited just came out pretty recently. It's, come, it's been out for a couple of months now. I say about three months. And you can see when the game first launched back in February 11th, when it first got announced, and you can see where it started releasing from, from February 11th, you can see car prices took a dramatic dip, a case, which is six boxes. You can see right here, you can see right there from 690 all the way down to when it released was around 537. Then all of a sudden, March 13th, after that, or March 5th, 13th and 15th, something weird happened. All of a sudden, people started getting pretty hyped. People liked Star Wars Unlimited and card price started going up. Not just going up, but I mean drastically going up. This could also be an indicator that they're just not the card game people, whoever makes that, which would be fantasy flight games, they make Star Wars Unlimited. They just may not be printing enough out there. If there was just a mass printing and you could just get your hands constantly on booster boxes, maybe the prices would come down. I don't know. Again, you guys can comment and let me know what you guys think about that. I do, however, though, this is why I love Grant Archive. They release a first edition, then they release an unlimited. First edition is going to be a little more expensive. Unlimited is going to be sig not, sig I don't want to use the word significantly inexpensive. I don't want to use that, but it will be cheaper than first edition, right? We all know this to be true. I think maybe some more card games may have to start doing this. I really do because these prices are just ridiculous. I can't see myself 
spending. Look at look at these prices recently. Eleven $1 hundred dollars on a case, nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars on a case. I mean, look look at all these prices, guys. Over a thousand dollars on cases. You know, up until what was it, seven seventy-five back in four four. So April fourth, and then eight thirty-eight, eight thirty-eight, eight thirty-eight, and then now consistently hitting. Uh, anywhere between eight fifty to eleven hundred dollars. I mean, that's just insane. And the cheapest right now is now thirteen hundred dollars. Just crazy. Is that because Fantasy Flight Games is not printing enough? Was there was not enough demand, not enough. I mean, supply for the demand. Is that was that what's going on here? I don't know. But then you start looking at the singles market, and the singles market paints a very unusual picture here. So you can see just all these car prices just skyrocketing here and of course the, these cards do make sense these are like the chase cards these are the showcase cards they're very hard to get um and they're just very expensive and you can just see like right here so this one started off around 300 then 290 but i don't want to spend too much time on these showcasing cards because these are the cards that are like maybe one in every case you may get or one in every other case you're, you're probably going to get i do want to take a look at the booster boxes though so sealed boost box. I saw the prices of the sealed case was going. The cheapest was around five, five fifty or something like that. We just saw that for six booster boxes. That's really good. That's less than a hundred dollars a box. I paid for my first booster box when I uh, bought um, a booster box of Star Wars Unlimited, uh, which I opened here on the channel. I paid eighty-eight dollars for that box. I went back and I bought another box. So I ended up buying two boxes basically for eighty-eight dollars. That's pretty fair. I, I like that price. I'm okay with that price. You can see when it first got announced, we're looking at $100, $104, $100. And then you can see booster boxes going below $100. So they weren't going drastically. They weren't going, at least on TCG Player, they weren't going below 90 But then all of a sudden, you can just see right here, just like the case prices drastically went up, booster boxes drastically went up as well. Not as much, though, as the case. I mean, the, the case prices are, is unreal to me. So what really changed? Well, let's look at now the singles. So legendaries which is the cards you're going to pull consistently in every booster box. So you're going to get, um, I think, two of these in every box. So as you guys can see, this was the Vader card. Now, there are two there are different types of cards there. This is the hyperspace, which has like this border list. And you can see it like, you know, actually going through hyperspace. Then there's regular and then there's also foil and there's foil hyperspace. So there's a lot of different variants of the cards as well. So take all of that information in as well. So when you're looking at all that information, what are we looking at? So Vader, which was a very powerful card, it's a staple. It's one of the most powerful cards if you're deck building and stuff like that. Understandably, there's only one set. So when that happens too, it's another part of this. Anytime there's just one set of something, these are, you, you can only buy from this set, right? So you can only get cards from the set outside of maybe some promos and other stuff like that. So of course, if it's a staple in every deck and it's a powerful card, then you can bet your bottom dollar, it's gonna be very expensive. And of course, this one is no different. So a normal version was $72, foiled was $167. And this is for the hyperspace, and you can see it just climb it up and up and up. Now, I don't want to spend too much again time on hyperspace, because that's variant. Those are the cards you're really, maybe you pull them, maybe you get lucky, maybe you don't. What I want to pay attention to is this. These are the normal versions of this card. So you guys can see the normal version right there, which is blue. You can see this card was hovering around 40 bucks. And then very quickly, this card skyrocketed, because again, it's a very, very powerful card. Is this the reason why we're seeing booster boxes and cases go up? Maybe. Is there a lot of hype around this card game? Are people just this hungry for a Star Wars game? That could also be it too. Again, I want you guys to comment. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. So the rest of these, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on the hyperspace because again, those are cards that are variant. I just want to spend time on the normal looking cards. So you can see Boba Fett, another good, pretty, uh, pretty good card, powerful card in the game as well. And you can see 38 bucks pretty normal then we're hovering around 50 okay and now we're just going up and up and up from here again is this the reason why what does these card prices when these card when you see these card prices starting to skyrocket what does that kind of tell you too that probably means there's a good tournament play um across the united states right or in europe and everywhere else like there's a, there's a good hardcore base that's playing this game and they're playing with tournaments because card prices don't drastically skyrocket like this unless there's a good base of players and they're playing competitively and there's some tournaments out there disney lorcana also did the same thing when they first launched in the scene there was a very strong base then there was a good competitive market out there and then a lot of people were playing in tournaments and stuff like that that just kept these prices going up one piece is also doing that it's why you always see pokemon up there as well because pokemon has a very good competitive play but pokemon i personally believe it's very expensive because 
content is king. I think Pokemon revolves around content, man. You can make a lot of content just ripping up Pokemon. Not a lot of content to be made ripping open, uh, opening up Star Wars Unlimited. Not of the tunes of millions like Pokemon. And that's just my thought. Again, you guys can comment if you think I'm wrong. But other cards like Luke Skywalker now, you can see he's pretty expensive. He was hovering around $29, $20. He was pretty cheap at one point. And then, of course, his price skyrocketed. And you're going to see this trend throughout all of this, by the way, because I already checked. Um, it's the reason why, like I said, you're just seeing card prices the way they are. I mean, Millennium Falcon, $19, $20, $13, $22. And it just goes on and on and on. And now here we are sitting at $30 for foil. Uh, what's regular? $30 for regular. So, I mean, like, it's just... It's going to be this way with all the card prices. So you guys can see right now all the cards that you can probably pull. You can see the prices. Let's just take like a medium card. Let's just look at, let's just look at home one, right? Let's see how inexpensive was this card? Well, at long, there you go, six bucks. So pretty much every card on this list has gone up by at least roughly, what, 7%. That's a pretty drastic percentage to go up by. Here's another one cunning. What did that drop that? So it was $20. Yeah, $10, $14, $12. Now up and up and up we go for $20 for just a regular. So you guys can just see how it is. And again, if you guys want to check yourselves, TCG player, there's the link. You guys can all check it out. I'll leave a link down below in the description box for Star Wars Unlimited. You guys can go check it out. Here's a card, black one. It was six bucks when it first got released, hovering around four or five dollars. So this one it didn't drastically go up like the rest of them. But you guys can see every card is going up. There isn't any card that's going down. Normally, another criteria I, used to, I would look at with you guys would look at other sets. But again, this is just one set. So we'll take a look at some of the rares. These are other cards that you can also pull. Uh, not the showcase cards, because those are obviously, you know, expensive. And you can just even see rare hyperspace cards like Boba Fett ship. You know? Normal. So this card has seen a little bit of a dip except for its foil version so some of the rares have seen a little bit of a dip and again that's a hyperspace card let's look at one that isn't a hyperspace here we go ks20 is that the cheapest on hyperspace yeah so let's take a look at this one this is a nine dollar and 75 cent card at the time of release so pretty much staying right where it's made. it had a little bit of a dip and then just goes right back up as well as the foiling a little bit of a dip and then now we're kind of flatlining there too. So even the rares aren't really seeing much of a of a dip. Here we go. Red three, unstoppable. Here's another card you guys can see. Really just all time high here. A little bit of a dip here, and now we're slowly getting back up. So it's all time high was twelve fifty one, and now we're selling at nine ninety nine. So what? A couple of two dollars off. Okay. If you go to the next page. Yeah, more of the same. Let's take out Ewing Reinforcement. So again, here's one that, here's another rare that saw at launch $4, $6 now, just going all the way up to nine. So rares aren't no exception to the rule right now. They too are skyrocketing up. There are no other sets currently, so there's nothing else that we can take a look at. It's just the one set. There is a new set incoming. I see some people making videos about that as well. So I can't really take at any other set. I just take a look at this one set. That's going to bring us to the end of this video. It's going to be a quick video because it's just one set to look at. Again, do I think now's a good time to buy, sell, or hold? It's pretty obvious what it is, guys. It's a good time to sell. Not hold, not buy, sell on Star Wars Unlimited. And what I mean by sell is do not be buying Star Wars Unlimited. By the time, mark my word, by the time a third set comes out, you will see a lot of these prices dip. Will we see a dip though? Here's the big question. I want you guys to comment down below. Will we see a dip, however, in sealed product cases and booster boxes? Because that's what matters the most. One piece has this problem right now going on. Booster boxes at an all time high car prices are pretty low. So how, how do we get how do we get these two things right? Pokemon, Pokemon booster boxes at an all time high single cards at an all time low. How the hell do these two things coincide with one another? And how is how can we get this and this to do this, to balance these two things out? How can we get booster boxes that are on an all time high and singles at a low point to balance it so we can get that equilibrium back? Because that's what we need. Yes, we're we living in a good era for TCG games, games, 
we are not living in a good market right now and this is something that i'm going to be keeping a close eye on because when the time comes and there the time will come to strike i'll be here to be making videos for that i want you guys to comment down below if you made it this far please hit that like button if you're new consider hitting that subscribe button as always guys thanks for watching thanks for listening see you guys next time